Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. I hope everybody had a good 4th of July weekend. If you're in a place that celebrates that kind of a thing. And if uh, you did the fireworks and all that, I hope you have all your fingers and everybody came through it safe. I am at work today, Saturday. No, it's not, it's Friday. I had a few things to do. I want to move this, uh, get the motor for the move to the center, as you know. So, got me a piece of 7 8 inch just piece of rod and went ahead and milled some uh, keyways on the end of it. This side is going to be the motor side. This is going to be the coupler that the motor will use. So I knew how long to make it. That side I made about two inches long because I'm not really sure how long this shaft needs to be. I cut it at 25. I think it needs to be 24 or thereabouts. And so I can cut an inch off of there if I need to. I'd rather have a little bit sticking out than come up short. I also made my new motor plate, this right here, four and a half inch hole. Uh, I managed to actually find a four and a half inch hole saw, so just did that on the drill press, and that was really loud. I had earplugs and it was still loud, so sorry neighbors. If I couldn't have found that, then I'd have had to, I guess I'd have had to go back and turn shop air on, because I, I would need to do this on the mill. He's a boring head on a mill. I don't like to turn shop air on because it's two big giant compressors and they run a lot and use a whole lot of electricity. And uh, I don't really need the air to do the milling, I just need the air to release the tooling from the mill. So uh, I found the four and a half inch, so we're all good there. And it actually made it a surprisingly accurate um, hole, so that's pretty sweet. Then I also made some bearing plates. These will be my shaft supports. This longer one is gonna be on the drive end and this side, this one's gonna be on the motor end. And uh, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you're interested in what I'm doing at the moment here at work, hold on. This thing is called a flexo, fold, a flexo, flex, flexo folder glue or something like that. And what it does is on this end, this is the feed side. Um, here's just all our gear train. I like this is really neat when it's running all these gears all meshing and turning and spinning and doing the things that they do. Um, it's very satisfying to, to see that. Uh, but yeah. And so what this does, this is the in feed side. So if you were the, the worker dude, you'd have like a table here probably, and you just have a whole bunch of raw paper and you just feed the, the corrugated paper in through here and it'll just go through this whole series of rollers and the rollers will size it up uh, to the left and the right width and I think it'll chop it off to the correct length as well and in here somewhere it's going to um, do little scores on the corrugation so that you can fold the, the leaves of the box up and it will also punch uh, slots so that you can have um, leaves for your boxes It'll do that. It'll go through here. We've got two printers in here, so it can do uh, either, you know, do two color prints, I guess. And then on the way out, it'll come through this thing. And at some point, this is going to have some chunks of plastic that kind of do like one of those numbers. So it takes the leaves of the box and flips it over. There'll be a little glue or a little sprayer right there on that gizmo right there. And it'll spray on the on the inside flap of the box. And then the, the plastic will flip this over. There'll be some little uh, some weights that push down on this. And then it's going to come out to this part. Don't look at that. That's not part of it. That's something else. And then it will go to the... It will go to the part that I'm working on right now. This is the counter ejector. So it'll come off of the little plastic bendy things. Come in through here. There'll be a whole series of conveyors. Like five or six... Uh, little strips conveyor strips and it'll kind of go up a hill It'll go up a hill It'll Come up over a little piece of metal right here and then it'll run up against a, a flat piece here I think we're getting into parts where I'm not exactly sure how the thing works But the way I understand it is it's gonna run into something here that little Aluminum plate there is on a on a pneumatic cylinder. And it's called a spanker and um, yes, we have spankers in the corrugated industry. We also have strippers, but that is a spanker and it's just going to kind of smash up against the back of that stack and oh, that's how it works. Yeah, it comes up here and it hits against something and then the next 
uh, folded glued box comes up through here, goes on the bottom of this stack that we start to form, and there's going to be a weight sitting on top of this thing. On These rails are crooked right now, but they'll be straight up and down, and there'll be some weights that sort of just sit on that and hold this stack of boxes uh, down, and then that thing spanks them and flattens the stack, and then it stacks, stack, 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 and then it runs off the conveyor and falls on the floor, and somebody has to pick it up. No, that's not true. This is going to have uh, another shelf that sort of comes out right here, and it's going to have rollers on it, and then those rollers will go into a, I would imagine, a conveyor system where it goes away, and it goes and gets uh, stuff put into it as a box. But that's what I'm working on right now. This thing is a, this thing has been a challenge, that's for sure, because these are called THK rails right here, and they're kind of precision uh, linear bearings and the distance between that one and that one has to be like correct and it also has to be very parallel this whole carriage system right here that moves that has to be like very square otherwise the rollers won't work and it's got a little little chain system over here because this is going to have like a a hand wheel right there you'll crank this here make it go left and right and then up here um, this is going to be where I was saying that there's a ramp, so the, car, the uh, conveyor sort of ramp down like that. And depending on how long the box is, you will move where this ramp happens. Because as the paper comes up and goes underneath the next one, you want to move that back forward or, or back, depending on the, the size of the box. And there's going to be all kinds of little adjusters and stuff over here too. And this will all be covered in plexiglass and um, this is going to work. It's going to work really great. There'll be two motor, motors here, two motors there and one up there. And then this whole system, this whole system moves. Um, this actually goes just like this on the machine. So where it flexes, where it you know folds through, it goes in that way. So this can move left and right for some reason. <laughs> I don't really know why. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm excited to see how this thing works, honestly. But that's what I've been working on. And... I've been making parts to you today, so um, yeah, I'm going to take all this stuff home and clamp it together and see what I can make happen, and uh, man, I got to tell you, if you don't work at a place like this or you don't know someone that works or has equipment and stuff like this, this job would be, a, making this stuff would be a whole lot easier. I can't uh, thank, you know, work enough for letting me come in and do this, and uh all right, we'll see you later. All right, back in the shop. Got motor mount. Got one of my little bearing plates. The other one's back there. I'll put it on later. But this is kind of the, what I'm thinking. This right here, I was, I was looking at my little A-frame support thing that I had going on back here with the chain going there and the chain going right there. And I got to thinking, like, what is that section of chain doing? It's not actually doing anything. Like if this A arm was locked in place, that chain could just be solid. This is the one that is going to be absorbing any um, deflection if the front of the mower comes up. This is going to, only going to be absorbing that. This one won't absorb that at all because this is sort of all together. So I got to think, well, what's, why do I even need that at all? What if this A-frame was just welded solid? What if it was just a post? What if it was a motor mount? And that way, I could have a motor mount that serves a dual function, cleans up and simplifies kind of everything. And this is what I've sort of come up with. This little line here represents... The angle of that arm right there. I don't really know if that matters, but I feel like it does, so I'm going to replicate it. This mark is kind of the center of that line. And these lines are sort of telling me where, what extra metal I need to cut out to make that look cooler. Because that's important. It's got to look cool. Once I do get all that cut out and welded in, I can go ahead and put a little gusset down here. Maybe... Maybe one over here. I don't know. And then 
this side. My biggest concern with lining this all up is to get these pulleys square to each other. And they are. They're very square to each other. I can take this straight edge here and uh, flat, flat it up against this pulley. And it just barely touches that bottom one. Flat it up against the pulley on the other side and just barely touches. So these pulleys are square against each other. That's what I want. Because this is going to be permanent. That's never going to come out. I'll have an adjuster, an adjuster on that side. kind of weird though because when I have that uh, like that there's a gap there's a gap down there at the bottom it's touching up here but there's a gap down at the bottom so I don't really care that's fine and then that kind of lines up in the center of my little widget there so if I have that chain here or anywhere along this line really back to uh, back to my point there then I think I'd be I'll be in good shape I think that'll solve that'll solve a whole lot of problems having this rigid mount here will make the vi motor not vibrate obviously and the only kind of a is that doing it this way means that I won't be able to use my little quick release thing here I thought about Maybe having that in here and then having holes along the outside of this that could match up with holes on that plate or one similar to it. And then you could just offer up this motor with this on there and then have uh, uh, bolts that just go through that plate into this one. And it would just go up against their flat. And that could work, actually, now that I'm looking at it. That actually could work. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. Well, no, it wouldn't because eventually this the motor is going to have studs. I'll have studs back on there again. And I would have to have a much bigger hole. Right now, that four and a half inch hole, that's just a register for the motor. But I'd have to have a much bigger hole. A hole that would go out past all these bolts. Yeah. Um, I don't want to do that. I'd rather, I'd rather just mount it solidly like this. Uh, because, yeah, I think, it, I think it just looks better if this was sitting there all poked out like that. It'd look kind of silly. No, it wouldn't look silly because, you know, a simple explanation. And, you know, it would all be cleared up. And like, oh, well, that makes sense. That's kind of cool. Perhaps. I don't know. But... I think this is a much better way of doing it. So I'm just going to go on ahead with this. And uh, I'm going to put a bit of thought into how to do that so it looks nice. Because it kind of needs kind of needs to be rounded over. I'll weld it down there on the bottom where it's touching. I'll weld it all through the center. I'll, weld, I'll just weld the living daylight out of the bottom of it. And then put a gusset or two here and there just to uh, stiffen everything up. I think that'll have, I think that'll have it, and then I will either replace this with my little Lovejoy, or I may I could just keep that in there. I think I'll have the Lovejoy. I think it'd be better to have a little bit of, um, a little bit of vibration isolation. So, all right, well that's what we're doing right now. Um, after I get this kind of installed, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Okay, so we've made a little bit of progress. I had to take all this apart again, get the motor off. I needed to come in here and get rid of all this paint and rust and all that stuff to give me something decent to weld on. And I also welded in a bigger, uh, just a quarter inch bracket, or uh, sorry, spacer. Welded that in there and um, yeah, put it all back on there. Made sure everything was still lined up, specifically the pulleys. I mean, I don't really care about anything else. <clears throat> and it is. Um, tighten that up. That's this is actually crucial. This is crucial to this whole thing, because um, this this we get the pulley lined up, but the motor obviously has to be lined up with that. And this holding this tight and keeping these shafts like locked solidly together in line. Um, there's a very good engineering term for that. Mm, I can't think of it. <laughs> Whatever they're 
concentric, concentric, maybe something like that. Um, anyway, that, and it is, and that's good. And then, uh, yeah, I got this. I wanted to kind of spin it up a little bit to see how it does. I've got this on here for a couple reasons. First of all, it keeps this bearing from spinning when the when the motor is turning the shaft. But also, I could use it as a um, as a good way to tell if there's any vibration in this shaft. Because uh, if there is, then I may need oops I may need to re I may need to determine where I place this bearing um, because I I don't want there to be any vibration. So. Um, it's probably going to go right there. It's, it is going to go right there. But, so let's, uh, let's spin it up and see what happens. Yeah, there we go. There's no vibration whatsoever. That's really nice. No vibration whatsoever. That is spinning nice and true. And, uh, yeah, this is gonna work great. So that's really cool. It, this is only about half power. I haven't really turned it up very far yet, but because I've only got things held on by clamps, so that's good enough. I'm gonna have to call it a quits for the night. We've got these little, got these little bugs. Let me go outside and see if I can see if you can see these things. There's these little, there's these little bitty tiny gnats, I guess you'd say, but they they're in these columns and they're crazy. Like, I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to try and zoom in. But like, there's these columns and these little bitty tiny gnats, and they're so small, but there's so many of them, you can hear them. You can hear their little wings flapping. It's insane. This happens, I don't know, this happens a couple times during this, uh, this sort of time of year. We had some rain earlier today, and I guess the rain encourages these things to come outside and find boyfriends and girlfriends or something. I don't know. But, man, they just get everywhere. They're all over my legs now, all over my arms. But they're about to find my lights, and they're going to be all over me. So uh, this is good. Tomorrow I'll go ahead and finish welding that up and put some bracketry. This is what I used just to kind of keep things spaced. I got this this piece under there. It's keeping the motor from, you know, touching down there. So there'll be a little bit of a gap there. Um, that's actually really tight in there. But uh, whenever... Whenever that gets welded down, it'll loosen up, I think, I hope. And then, um, yeah, I was also kind of looking at this. I want to avoid the situation that I was trying to fix earlier with having too long of a chain up here. I was earlier saying that I'm going to pivot that thing here, but this is as long as the chain was before when this was on that um, A-frame. It was only about this long anyway. So I think I'm going to just duplicate that and just for um, trial purposes i'm going to try and just drill a hole right there and see what happens and uh yeah just kind of see what happens and then if it if it's you know still cool then maybe i could drill a hole back here further and try it and if it looks better and if it works better then i can go with that maybe maybe having a hole clear up here is the answer i don't know but um yeah, I'm just going to keep this all like it is and weld all this solidly and uh, yeah, just work with this chain and see what, what performs the best. And I think we got a winner here. This is pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, I will uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.